Okay guys, here we are again with another tutorial. Now this tutorial is going to be on um, some basic color correction on, on video production. Uh, this is Eric Morales, aka Enicer Graphics Media. I'm going to show you a quick way that you could just change the color or the look of your video. Uh, this is pretty simple. We are in Adobe Premiere Pro CS5. And you know what I actually want to show you is pretty simple on how I give a different look to some of my videos. You know, just sort of to give that cinematic look, even though I want you to take in consideration that you know, cinematic look it's upon your eye or within your eye. Um, depending on what kind of look you're shooting for, that's actually the kind of color correction that you're gonna do. Now, what I did is pretty basic, you know, because I don't want to go into full details on how to do it. Uh, at least not just yet, because, you know, all I really did just, you know, recorded the old ugly ass me. Um, so this is pretty simple. That's the kind of look that I gave this clip. Uh, you see how you can actually see some definition in the eyes. Now, if I turn everything off, this is what you get. I mean, practically, this profile right here is from Scene Style or scene style, however you want to mention it, uh, what it actually does is just gives you one flat profile, meaning that all the colors are actually just flat. So like that, when it comes down to editing, you can actually just give it the look you want. Now, what I started, you know, you just got to make sure that your sequence matches your actual clip. Like, uh, my clip actually is at uh, <clears throat> the dimensions of 1920 by 1080 on um, one square pixel at 24 frames per second. So you got to make sure that your sequence matches that up. So to create a new sequence, just come here, sequence. And then here, you're actually gonna go to settings. If you already don't have it in one preset, you can always just come to the settings and hit uh, custom uh, 24 frames, which is the movie clip. And here you're gonna change the dimensions like 1280 by, I mean, 1920. I'm sorry, 1920 by 1080. Now notice here, it gives you the aspect ratio. Once you hit it, it's like it says 160 column 99. That's because here in the picture aspect ratio, it's a 0 0.9091. So you have to change that to square pixel, uh, which will give you just that one pixel. And then it gives you the dimension of 16 column 9, which is the full HD. Then after that, I just click OK. Now you see that the timeline here is actually, this is your sequence, this is sequence one. This is the previous one I was working on where I actually gave it, but I want to show you from scratch. <clears throat> so practically, just drag your clip into the timeline. Now, is there anything about your clip that you don't like or you don't want? It's as simple as, yes, let's delete this. You can just double click on the clip, automatically shows in this uh, small preview window. Just want it up to there. So instead of just grabbing the whole clip and cutting it down here, I'll just do it right on the preview window, hit this semi semicolon here, and automatically just gives me this piece right here that I automatically want. Now you can automatically just hit here to overwrite automatically puts it on the timeline or you could just drag just the video you if you don't want the audio just drag the video you see what i'm saying automatically here it hits the actual video and the audio and then drag it from here if you just want the video or if you just want the audio you just grab it from here you see what i'm saying so that's a pretty sweet trick um but let's get to it um practically right now i'm just gonna go to video effects this is actually where you're going to have all the effects right here. I have the whole Magic Bullet uh, suite from Red Giant. You know, you could actually just go into the page and check it out. They got like these demo trials. You could download and try them out before you buy them. Uh, so practically, my favorite out of all of them, it's called Magic Bullet Mojo. 
I don't know why they call it Mojo, but at the same time, it's my favorite. So I'm just gonna drop that into there. I'm gonna go here into the effects control. Just so you can see what they do. So that's me with the Mojo. And this is me without the Mojo. Now you can see the actual difference. How actually the Mojo brings all those shadow details and you know some of the highlights. And then after that, you just play around with the controls. I mean, let's just set it at zero. Uh, zero. Uh, zero. Now you got the same flat profile. So now after you do this right here, you got the Mojo. Let's say the Mojo you just wanted at 20%. See, just brought all that shadow back into there, and then you know that's with the mojo without the mojo. Um, then you can actually just punch it up to bring more detail into the actual picture. Let's say about 50%. See what I'm saying? You it went from all the shadow details is coming back now. Practically, if you just want to warm it up a little more, I'll say it about a 10%. You don't want to oversaturate it either. Now, this is what we're doing here is actually, it's not a color correction, it's more of a color grading. But you know, just to give it that, that look, that film look that you actually want. So, that's that right there, let's say on the Mojo right here, let's say you want it at 10%. You know, it takes away some of that brush yellowish color and then the Mojo balance is 50%. Uh, yeah, so right about there looks good. So up to here we're looking pretty good. So now our, what we're going to do just to give it a different look, we're going to go into Magic Bullock Misfire. Now you're going to see a series of plugins in here that you can do a lot of things. Um, what I want to do, I want to bring more contrast into the picture just because I want to give it a little darker look. So, you know, you got to be careful with the contrast, but now you see that, that's way too extreme, but all you have to do is just bring it here in about 10%, and that's that, and now it's like, the take the contrast out. You want the more definition you actually can in here. And then after that, uh, what I actually like to do, I like to throw some tint. Um, We'll just type here tent on this explorer automatically finds it for me which is a great feature in a cs5 now do not worry if you actually get this black and white video because what it's going to do is just going to replace the white for whatever color you want so we're going to click on the white let's say i want like a greenish look which is the one thing that i noticed the most on videos or actually film now you see how you get most of the highlights just green, so then you just lower that opacity by about 15%. See, now you got like this nice looking cinematic look. And you know, one of the things that I notice the most in most movies is that they like to do the 10 twice, or at least I like to think so. Um, let's say now on the blue, because you see green and blue, actually almost goes together what really kills on actual uh whether it's a picture or a video it's always the rgv values which is red green and blue so practically right here i'm just going to bring it about 10 percent i mean you can hardly notice the difference but believe me is there you see you just went to that different shape right here uh, this is now without the blue, with the blue, without the blue, with the blue. Green, no green, green, no green. You see, once you take out the green, you see all that red coming back, you know, my actual face and all that. Um, once I put it back and then practically, that's about one of the things I like to do for color grading. Now, 
everything I do is not going to work for you because I don't guarantee it, but it gives you a, a perspective on how to just color grade some of your videos after you've done the color correction. Now, the proper color correction, I will have to do that in a different tutorial because, you know, it's kind of a process, not complicated, but it actually helps. And a lot of the people don't have the Adobe Master Suite collection because on the Adobe Master Suite collection, it gives me this option that I could bring, you know, like I could take a snapshot of the video, bring it into Photoshop, I'll do the color correction there, save the curse preset, and then I'll bring it in, into here through the whole Adobe Suite collection. If you just have like one standalone program, all you have to do is try to remember every single uh, detail or step that you took during the curves, and then you'll do it here inside the program. Because practically video and, and, uh, and photos are treated about the same, because you see RGB values are RGB values. So then practically that's what you do. You know, you actually got here, let's say, color correction. So you got the brightness and contrast, just like in Photoshop. Then you have the color balance, you have the fast color corrector. Actually, I don't think you had that on, on Photoshop. But you see, here's the RGB, RGB curves, and then the 10, and then the three-way color corrector. Now, if you want to take your uh, video to the next level, you can actually still bring this three-way color corrector into the picture. And uh, I'm not going to say everything is going to change right off the bat, but you see what I'm saying? Like, we could boost the green channels. You see how it affects the shadows? Because this is the shadow, this is the mid-tones, and this is the highlights. You know, and then you could actually just give it like a different look. You know, let's say, for example, now that's too pink, I'll say just about yellow there. And then the same thing for the highlight. Then here, you can actually just change it onto the master and, you know, like I said, just give it a different look, retro look. You know, I think actually it works pretty good, so that's bringing the saturation up. Yeah, but that's how I practically do my basic mm -hmm. color correction or color upgrading or color grading, whatever you want to call it, in Adobe Premiere Pro CS5. Now, until the next time that I'll come up with an old tutorial, I'm going to try to keep them coming as I come. Hopefully, I'll do one per day, but unfortunately, because doing so many other things at the same time, it's really killing me. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on this color grading using Adobe Premiere Pro CS5. This is Eric Morales, a.k.a. Nicer Graphics Media, and I hope you enjoyed. Just don't forget, subscribe and hit me up on my Twitter, Nicer212 and Facebook and YouTube. See ya.